Good evening, Monday Morning Quarterback, episode 118. Glad you guys could join us tonight. We are here uh, to talk some torsion bars. <clears throat> so as I was kind of looking through what some of our more popular Monday Morning Quarterbacks were and some, some that we could dive a little deeper into, torsion bars was definitely one uh, that seems to have the most views on our YouTube page. And uh, we did a two-part um, segment back in 2018, so it's been a couple years. And so I figured we could dive in talk torsion bars a little more in depth. As always, answer all of your tech questions as well. Um, we're always looking for feedback from you guys. Do you like this style of video? Um, do you like the old style? Do you want a combination? Um, do you like the interviews? Uh, what do you want to see on Monday Morning Quarterback? Because I stay late on Monday nights for you guys. So um, definitely want to give you uh, what you're wanting and what you can learn the most from. And so, so comment, let us know, send me a message, uh, what works best for you guys. And uh, always if this time slot works. So we moved to this later time slot pretty early on. Uh, it used to be actually Monday morning quarterback, um, but this later time slot seemed to work for most. So, so let us know, comment please. We're looking for feedback as we plan for 2021 and what the show looks like and what we can do. Um, one of the things we're building into our new facility is to have a designated area for Monday morning quarterback and tech videos and all of that. So definitely looking forward to that. We're not uh, moving stuff around in the shop to do, <laughs> to do it every week. So um, great weekend for our customers uh, out west at the Western World. Um, won the sprint car race both nights. First night, Justin Grant in the Reinbold Underwood car. And then Sunshine picked up the win in his sprint car on Saturday after a heartbreaker in the midget, which has put him behind the eight ball a little bit in the championship, but um, one night to go out there in California, fingers crossed that it doesn't get canceled. Um, the Winter Nationals, I just got the news before we went live that that got canceled. That's a real bummer. That's an event we really look forward to going to every year and seeing all of our West Coast customers. And I know the Good Times Club worked really, really hard to, to get that thing to go and uh, just a bummer that it seems like we keep fighting this battle um, of opening, not opening, and um, even outdoor events are getting canceled. So uh, we'll, I'll be going to Huntsville over Thanksgiving now for their turkey gobbler. I'm excited to go to Huntsville. We used to hit that race on our way to Vegas uh, when Vegas was first week of December, and we've missed it the last couple of years because they were on top of each other. So. Super excited to get, uh, get to Huntsville. We're gonna bring down some gift certificates and try to give gift certificates to everybody that wins a heat race from CSI. Um, also during that time, um, we're having a Cyber Monday, Black Friday to Cyber Monday sale, mainly on apparel. We're launching a bunch of new apparel um, next week. And, uh, and then there'll be a couple other deal of the day kind of things from Friday to Monday next week. So keep an eye on our website. It is alive and moving and everybody in the world should be able to access our website now after having a few hiccups there during the super sale. So uh, I'm gonna dive into our topic for tonight, uh, which is torsion bars. Talk about that a little bit and then uh, I will pick up my phone and look at your guys' questions and answer questions on any topic, whether it's torsion bars, um, quarter midget setups, sprint car setups, bump rubbers, shocks, whatever you wanna ask, we'll, we'll answer those. So. One of the questions we get a lot um, now that we carry both chalk and Schroeder brand bars is what's the difference, right? So we have a Schroeder torsion bar, um, which is polished end to end. Um, this is a tubular 700 Schroeder uh, micro bar. Um, so we have that that we, we stock. And then we also have the chalk. Um, this is a regular chalk stick, which is what they offer in the micro bars and it's only polished out on the ends. Um, and they look different. Um, what's the difference between the two, right? Uh, so both brands um, are, are now owned by Racing Bars and they're ma manufactured in Kokomo and we're a part of that company. And so what's the difference? So the chalk bars um, have been made a certain way. That was kind of the first brand that, um, that they had. And then when PAC was looking to get rid of Schroeder, uh, we, we were interested. It's a legacy brand. Um, it's a brand that has a storied history. I've known the Schroeder family for a long, long time, and they have a super quality product. And so when we looked into it, one of the things we wanted to make sure we did was we continued to manufacture the Schroeder bars the way that the Schroeder family had intended, right? So using their heat treat specs, um, their processes, and then we acquired all the machines from PAC as well. So 
Um, so those are a couple things that are really important. So the best way to describe it is, do you prefer chocolate or do you prefer vanilla, right? Both taste good to me, but some people have a preference, one or the other. Um, both bars start as the same material. However, the heat treat process is slightly different. Chalk's recipe is one way, Schroeder's is the other. Um, when we dyno them, the chalk bars seem to usually have just a little bit more rebound than a Schroeder. Some people swear that feels better, some people swear the Schroeder feels better. Um, what I've told people is if your program's been built around one brand of bar and you're happy with it, um, stick with it because changing is going to get the balance off a little bit. And I certainly don't recommend running a chalk in one side and a Schroeder in the other. You should be all in with one brand or the other, okay? So that's kind of the differences between the two brands. A couple other things I want to point out on torsion bars, and I'll use the chalk bar for as an example because it's um, the easiest to identify, is so micros, the effective length is, is the same across most brands, okay? I haven't checked the new uh, DMI effective length, but I would assume it's similar. When you get to the sprint car bars, they have both a 23 and a 24 inch effective length. And what I mean by the effective length is that's the turn down area of the bar, okay? So a different effective length will give you a different overall spring rate. So on a sprint car bar, um, Schroeder has a, an E23 and an uh, E24. So um, you'll, you'll wanna pay attention to that if you're switching from one brand to the other because you might get a slightly different rate depending on uh, the effective length you have, okay? So that's one important thing uh, to keep in mind is what is the effective length of your bar? Um, another thing that's really important with your overall spring rate is the, the arm length, and I can show you that on the bar dyno. Um, based on how long your arm is, that's what your effective spring rate is going to be. So what I mean by that is, um, this is our Maxwell bar dyno, is how long is the arm from the center where it picks up uh, on the, at the torsion bar, to the center of the pickup at the birdcage. Um, typically that would be a rod end sticking out on your birdcage. The length of that arm plays a great effect in your overall spring rate, okay? The last thing to really think about is how stiff your torsion arm is. So if you have an arm that's really pocketed out and really light, there'll be a lot of deflection in that arm. And so not all of the energy from the torsion bar will be applied um, to the tire or to that corner of the car. So um, there's stiffer and softer torsion arms. Uh, when we first got this machine, we did a ton of testing. The table slides back and forth, and we could test different offsets of arm and different length arms, different materials, and we were astounded up to like a 25% difference from one brand of arm to another, and that's a full bar size. So uh, if you build new cars in 2021 and you change brands of arms, really pay attention to that. How light is it? How much is it pocketed out? Um, because if you're running an inch bar and all of a sudden you go to a, a newer style arm that's not pocketed out as much um, and it's a stiffer arm, now your inch bar might feel more like a 1015 or a 1025. So those are some important things to think about as you move into next season and potentially change some of the equipment. Um, so again, this is our Maxwell Bar Dyno. If you purchase bars from us, we will dyno them um, if you tell us what corner um, it goes on. Um, and we can also dyno um, used bars. So we do, we dyno about 2,000 bars a year uh, across this machine between new ones and used ones. And um, we have a, just a ton of data since we've done so many bars. We've had this machine for uh, almost nine years. So uh, we've dynoed tens of thousands of torsion bars and we got a lot of data as far as what an inch should be, what a 975 should be, et cetera. Um, so those are some of the important things to consider. Um, one last thing I'll touch on before answering your questions is we get asked all the time, how long should a torsion bar last? That's well, really a loaded question. It depends on how smooth or rough the track is. If you um, crashed it all during that period and your, your bar saw some trauma. Um, I always tell people if you flip and it breaks a stop or an arm, don't run the bars. Put new bars in, okay? Um, it, that's very stressful on the bar. Um, under normal circumstances, you should get 20 to 25 nights out of it, okay? It's a wear item, just like your right rear tire. The biggest difference is you can't see when this wears out like you can your tire. Now, if you dyno it, um, and we, we 
and look very closely at it, you can see where it starts to slow down on rebound and it's not working quite like a new bar. So when these bars start to go bad, they don't necessarily get softer, they just don't react as quick. So it's not gonna be as positive of a reaction to turns in the stop, um, and it's not gonna be as posi positive of a reaction on the racetrack. It's not gonna return to center quite as quick. So I'll jump back over here, pick up my phone, and look to see what questions I can answer uh, for you guys. Uh, Heath, good evening. Rick, hello. Chad, can you see where Brad works? Well, the question's still out if Brad actually works. So uh, we call him Pockets, and um, maybe we'll do a Monday morning quarterback with Pockets sometime. He would, he would love that. He's great in front of the camera. Ryan, yeah, you're getting, you got a few more days to get your stuff ready. I'm ahead of the game. <laughs> uh, cars are at Excalibur getting lettered, and we were ready to put them in the trailer Thursday night and head to Vegas. Now we have a few more days um, to get ready for Huntsville. Oh, Rick, you're going to Huntsville. Awesome. Look forward to seeing you there. Um, super cool track, and um, sad to not be going to Vegas, but we're excited to be going there. Uh, mongoose, mongoose. Ugh. difference between hollow and solid. So pretty much everybody runs a hollow bar now. Um, and that's a good, good thing we should talk about is hollow versus solid. So when torsion bars first became um, the suspension of choice in midgets and sprint cars, everything was hollow. So a one inch diameter bar actually measured one inch across the effective length. Okay. And when they went to a hollow bar, rather than measuring, giving you the actual measurement of what the bar is, they determined what that diameter needed to be so it had the same spring rate as a one inch solid. So nowhere across the effective length will it measure one inch on a hollow bar. So this is a 700. It's not gonna measure 700 anywhere because this diameter is the equivalent of a 700 solid. Um, I had a customer last week that's like, Man, we've gotten so far advanced in shocks. When are we going to get there with bars and quit calling them a dimension they aren't anywhere across there? And I agree, right? Like we should just call it by the actual spring rate and, um, and maybe we'll get there and, and maybe I can <laughs> lead that charge. Um, we, could, we could tell you what the actual spring rate is. So uh, hollow bars is pretty much what everybody runs unless you're running really, really small diameter bars and it's not um, prohibitive to make a hollow bar. Hollow bars react quicker, um, they're lighter, um, they're just 21st century race car part. I feel like a solid bar is something that should go on a tractor. Um, I know though, Jim, in some of your applications, you might be using three quarter inch on some of your 270s and, um, and some of those real small three quarter inch bars, you have to go solid, you just can't get small enough. Um, Handing an odd or even? Well, I picked odd last week and I lost, so even. Um, Martin Edwards, is bar sag a lack of rebound or is that compression going soft? Um, typically, if you, if you bounce the car and it, and it sags, um, I would say it's not returning back to center quite as quick. Um, when we dyno bars, and I said, again, we've dynoed tens of thousands of them, your overall spring rate usually doesn't get softer when a bar gets old. It just rebounds a lot slower. Maybe it's not rebounding all the way if it's really wore out. Um, so that's what I would say it is. If the car's still winning, do we change the torsion bars? Uh, good question, Paul. Um, if your setup's good and you, you feel great and you don't think your bars have seen any trauma, there's probably no need to change them. Um, however, it is, there is a life expectancy on it, right? So if you're still winning races with your engine, but you're at the point that it needs rebuilt, um, you start to kind of play Russian roulette there as far as um, when it is gonna fail on you. So uh, I always lean towards the side of preventative maintenance. I wanna change it before it bites me, um, but I know it would be hard to change a component or a setup when you're, you're being successful in winning. Uh, John Randall, reverse split, old school thinking in non-wing cars. Um, I don't think you see it a ton anymore. Um, I know there are some people that are very successful with it. Uh, a lot of midgets run reverse split, but, um, 
they have two different length torsion bars. So it's, when you look at the spring rate, it's not as flopped as it would be on a sprint car. Um, I've never been a big reverse split guy. When I raced and ran reverse split, um, I felt like I was so free on entry that it drove off really good, but I couldn't get to the center good. And when I crew chief cars, I just never felt like my balance was very good with reverse split. That being said, I know guys that are very, very successful have won every big racer is to win on reverse split. So again, it's driver preference and what works best for you. If I was to set your car up, I, I wouldn't run reverse. I would probably be paired up when the track got slick. So, um, Steven, has the new right rear shock been ran on wing cars yet? Yes. Mark Smith has won 21 features with it. So, uh, also John Randall, they used it. Um, we put it on at little rock and they ran it kind of the end of the season there. Um, Dale Howard's been running it, uh, one, of, one of the 360 guys that Mark Smith works with. Um, so yes, it's definitely been ran on wing cars with great success. Um, Scott, I haven't dynoed any of the titanium arms. However, knowing that material, um, I would say very good, right? So very little deflection, um, especially if you're going from an aluminum to a titanium arm. Um, super positive, very little deflection. The thing that you have to consider though, is if you ran an inch bar with a, an aluminum arm, and now you put a titanium arm on with an inch bar, your effective spring rate is going to be much stiffer. So you're going to have to adjust your torsion bar rate to get the, the same rate you had in the past, if that was a good balance for you. But the titanium arms are awesome. Um, I thought about doing that years ago. Uh, but I didn't think we could ever sell them for as expensive as they are. But um, some people have done it. Uh, Stevie Smith built some, and they're gorgeous and awesome. And if I was building a sprint car, I would put them on my car. <laughs> Paul, I, I think I answered the question. Like, again, if you're winning races, I know it's hard to take a part off. However... Um, at some point it, it could bite you because they don't last forever. Um, so there might be certain applications where the bar is under very, very little stress and they last a lot longer. Um, for example, the rear sway bar on a pavement midget, that thing is turned less than 10 degrees at all times where the yield point of that bar is closer to 40 degrees. So it's so far away from the yield point that bar would last forever. Um, but most dirt applications were operating close to or at the yield point which damages the bar so like northeast modifieds they operate at the yield point or above and they have to replace their bars like every two races um, just because of the way those cars travel and how hard they are on torsion bars so uh, chad do you block the car in the trailer to save the bar or the shock i definitely do it more so to save the bar than the shock um, the shock should be able to see that very low frequency bumping going down the highway. Um, the torsion bar, however, would get a bigger workout. So airbag or a, a wood block, um, definitely recommend. Russ, is there a way to check to see if a bars went bad at the track? No, not really. So how we always checked them prior to having torsion bar dynos was with four fixed tires. We kept four tires in the shop. Um, shocks unhooked from the car, block the car and measure your four corner heights. Use those same tires every week and same bars. And when a corner started to sag, we would replace the bar. Okay, so if your right rear corner height was 13 inches every week and all of a sudden it's 12 and a half off the same blocks, we would replace the bar. Um, it'd be pretty hard to do at the racetrack, but that's how we would check at the shop. Um, Tyler, lifespan of bars for winged uh, micro outlaw. Um, you're, you're probably in that 25 race range um, before you should replace them. Yeah. Chase Randall watching. Glad you're uh, feeling okay, Chase. That was a, a digger you had there um, Saturday night. Uh, does anybody else have any questions? Happy to answer them for you. Um, again, we greatly appreciate the feedback. So if you like this form that we're using um, this style of monday morning quarterback let us know if you like the old style where i'm in my office with a single camera if you like the interviews if you want a combination 
let us know and also let us know if this nine o'clock time slot works for you. If you tell me you want 11 o'clock, I'm gonna tell you no because I'm uh, early to bed, early to rise, those of, <laughs> those of you who know me. So this is pushing it. I get home like past my bedtime on Monday nights. Um, Tim, uh, for a micro on a track with a rough choppy cushion, what bars would you recommend? Um, DM me, Tim, because I, ha I would have five other questions to go with that. Um, how much does a driver weigh? What type of chassis do you have? Wing or non-wing? Um, let me know those things and I will be more than happy to give you some recommendations. Tyler, does it matter if you change sides with the stop? So you should always move the bars diagonally. So a right rear can go in the left front, a right front can go in the left rear and vice versa. Do not put a right rear bar in the left rear. Um, when you twist it the opposite orientation, uh, the bar does not like it. And the best analogy I can give you is think of um, bending a piece of aluminum one direction, and then when you flip it and you bend it the other way, it wants to crack. Well, a torsion bar is not gonna crack, but once the molecules in that metal are used to going one way and then you have it go the other, it acts crazy on the dyno for a while, and then it kind of settles in. Uh, I'm not a metallurgist, but something tells me that that's not correct and you shouldn't do that, so. Paul, it's Tuesday lunch over there, so maybe we ought to start doing it on Sunday for our Australia and New Zealand customers. Um, appreciate you tuning in. And uh, Martin, coilover or torsion? Um, that's a little bit of a complicated question. So I like torsion bars. I like the way they felt when I raced, um, even non-wing. Um, you know, most midgets, shorter wheelbase, less horsepower, their coil front. Um, but on a sprint car, uh, I feel like the slower reacting with all the power we have, it makes the car a lot more drivable where a coil made the car a little more unpredictable. It reacted a little faster. Um, so I'm more of a torsion bar, but um, like a non-wing micro, I think a coil front might work well or definitely a midget. So um, good question though. Dave, thanks for tuning in. Dave's out in PA pouring a bunch of seats for guys. Um, we're looking to have Dave on one of the shows we'd like to do is um, on some more safety stuff that Dave can um, lead more insight. Um, if we're going to do more interviews, who do you guys want to see us interview? Um, I want to do Baloo again because everybody loved that and I totally fouled it up with my phone. And so we'll do Baloo in a more professional manner because everybody loves to hear Robert. Uh, we've done KT, Tim Clausen, Austin from Hyper, Mark Smith, Jake Hagopian. Might be missing somebody, but let us know. If you want to hear one of those guys again or you want to hear somebody else, we would love to, um, we would love to do it. Hannigan, front torsion bars. On a micro, how much can you move the front end back or forward before you change a bar to keep spring rate the same? I can't do the math that good in my head, um, but I think guessing probably a quarter to three eighths of an inch of arm length is going to be equal to one bar size depending on the arm length but i think right in that window so not much um driven wants to see brad coleman pockets on monday morning quarterback okay we're going to get pockets to stay late one week uh, Tom, benefits to running a split rack. So short bar fronts is kind of the tweener between a full torsion bar and a coil car. Some guys love it. Um, that was like really popular in the late 90s, early 2000s on the Outlaw Tour. Um, I know there's some micro manufacturers that did it. Um, yeah, I think it's cool. They're lighter um, and it's kind of in between whether you want to be full bar or a coil. Um, that short bar is kind of in between. Patrick, you want to see uh, Samantha, your wife, who is our shipping and inventory control and boss of everybody um, on Monday Morning Quarterback. If she would do it, we'd have her on. Um, I think people like to see our employees. Maybe we need to do, maybe we need to get Tyler to do another employee video so we can see some of the new faces here at CSI. Um, Tom Hahn, do you like coil packs on rear shocks? Tom, I assume you're meaning um, like a bump spring. And, um, and yes, I do. In a lot of applications, I think that helps you 
um, control ride height, add extra load, kind of get a dual spring rate effect um, because you're not going to engage that bump spring uh, until a certain point. So um, we've done a couple shows on bump rubbers and bump springs, and I am a fan uh, of that. So, all right. Well, I think we've got everybody's questions answered for tonight. Uh, episode 118, we certainly appreciate you turning in, uh, tuning in. Um, 118 of these, uh, we greatly appreciate your feedback and things you want to hear, right? I start to run out of ideas after probably 30 or 40 of them, and somehow I've done 118. So um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for supporting CSI. Please like and share the video. Uh, we get these posted to our YouTube page. You can catch them there if you've missed them, if you're new to the show. Um, all of the episodes are cataloged on our YouTube page, and please subscribe while you're there. And I uh, hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week.